So we have a really nice pristine 67 GTO with some really rusty old drum brakes. That's not happening, those gotta go. Previously on the GTO build. All right, we're at Joe's transmission. I've been doing this stuff since I was 16 years old, so. <laughs> Sounds good. Took the extra steps to make sure that this car is perfect. And that is how you wire an engine. Next thing is brakes. Before with this brake install, 242 GTOs all came with a posi. This does not have a posi, so we need a posi. <laughs> Now our GTO is a true 242 GTO, so it did already have disc brake in the front, but it still had the drums in the back. Uh, the reason we're still converting it is uh, we needed a rebuild kit for the uh, front. We were having issues matching up the right seals. Um, and after all, this kit, you get everything that you need, which is the booster, the master, brake lines for your A-body GMs, which is your Chevelle, your GTO, your Al Caminos. But you can head over to Summit and see what other kits they have available for other makes and models, not just GMs. The installation will generally be the same, so you can still follow this video as a reference. Everyone will come with instructions, but uh, check out Summit and see what else they have to offer. Here we go. I think this GTO needs some new rims. We'll have to remove the, the disc brake and the spindle assembly. We'll have to crack our tie rod end off. Shouldn't have any issues with that because we just put all of this on. It's uh, in primer. So we'll get this all taken care of before we risk scratching the paint or doing any damage. What we're gonna be getting into is we're gonna be replacing the rotor and that will come with new bearings, um, castle nut, everything that we need for that. We will be reusing the, uh, the spindle here where your tie rod end uh, connects to, and we will be replacing the, the actual spindle assembly here as well. It's good to do an inventory of your kit, make sure that you have everything that you need. Um, but a better thing is to, before you tell everybody how to do it, do one side, then invite your buddies over, and show them how good you are at doing this. We'll pull this castle nut off. The other rotor on the other side actually had a big groove in it. I put it on the lathe, the machine it down a little bit. We'll, I'll be keeping these rotors and the uh, four piston calipers that came original with the uh, GTO as well, just in case. Okay, so we'll pull our dust cover off. We gotta pull these little tabs off on the, on the top here. Now don't take that casting nut all the way off. Just put the threads kind of to the top. These are all loose still because we've replaced everything. But before we take it on the road, we're gonna take the whole car to an alignment shop. This kit allows you to get drop spindles as well. And we found the car the way it was sitting, even with the engine transmission in it. The front was up just a bit too high. So you can check out which size is appropriate for you. I think we dropped ours three quarter inch. So you can use a pickle fork and wreck your boot if you want to take your tie rod end off. But if you can take a bar, and it works better with a buddy, to just put a little bit of tension on it um, and then just tap this lightly, it should pop right out. Now the nut, keeping the nut on the top makes it so that it doesn't go flying. Um, and that works from anything from a small little guy like this to transfer tracks. Put that back out of the way. And we'll take these bolts off the back. Good thing we're replacing these. I might be running out of oxygen. I'm running out of oxygen. This is what the, the other car shows don't show you. The struggle is real. It's good, it's one. Welcome to Canada. This used to be a 19, now it's an 18. Okay, so we won't be reusing that, luckily. <laughs> but they are for sale. You, you do have to reuse this piece. Now some, of, it comes with half inch grade eight bolts in the new kit and some of these holes aren't um, half inch, so you might have to drill them out. So stick them in a drill press, make sure that you're nice 
uh, and straight on. If you're worried about it at all, I think Right Stuff does sell these. They're like 60, 70 bucks, but uh, I just, that's a drill bit. Just drill it. Same idea with these cotter pins um, and the hammer trick works just as good. They always install it the easy way, which makes it the difficult way to remove it. And when you remove it, it's seized and rotten. There you go. So spin those out. You don't need these, you're watching the video. So I back these nuts off until I have about three threads left and then I, there's no more tension on it. I can just pull these off. If you still have tension on it, you're gonna have to compress your spring. We don't have to do that on this one. Oh, almost caught that one. We'll take this out and you're done with this, even though the one that I have looks exactly the same. We're gonna put it in anyway. Look how nice and shiny that is, brand new threads. These are uh, ambidextrous, so they'll fit on either side. There is no left or right to your spin. I'm gonna put the cotter pin in the easy way now because I don't care about future rich. You want to be able to turn, nice full motion. We are good to go. Okay, so we're gonna start with the backing plate. Uh, there is a left and a right to the backing plate. So you wanna make sure that the opening is towards the back for the caliper. Hold it in place with the top nut, leave the two out for now on the bottom. So it comes with nice locking nuts and grade eight bolts. Take one, stick it in the front. Take the other one, stick it in the back. Pull that one back out again and just slide this in behind. Take our little steering arm and slide it in behind over top of the bolt and then put our lock nuts on. Did you know that 19 is the same size as three quarter? Learn something new every day. It's the at the end that really does it. Make sure to stick your hand in between the wrench and the steel because you don't want to scratch the steel. Your hand will get better, your steel won't. We can put our tie rod back on now. Get in your hole. Okay, so there is a left and a right to the rotor. Um, and that is because they are slotted and allow for air to go through and spin around. So um, if you look at your box, it will have a 5514L. The other one will be right. So right would be passenger, left would be driver. Now these already come with the races installed. So we need to install our bearings and our seals. And then you also have a cap with new cotter pins and washer and castle nut in it as well. There's your seal, make sure you got the right seal. Two bearings, you'll have a larger one and a smaller one. Larger one always goes on the inside. So there are wheel bearing greasers, they're little cups. Um, we are always taught in school to put a little bit in your hand and then just take it with the open side up and just keep working around the outside and squeezing the, the grease in until you start to see it coming out the top. We need to get the grease in behind the bearing. Now see it start to squeeze out there. Just rotate a little bit and keep going. I have used the bearing greasers, the little cups. You sandwich the bearing in between. I find you gotta fill up the whole center space of the bearing first. And now um, keep in mind that we worked on transport trucks and stuff like that too. So it's a lot of wasted grease. And if you don't clean it off every time or keep it in a clean environment, which heavy duty shops never really are, um, you get a lot of dirt and dust and crap in the grease and you're putting that into the bearing. So this is just grab a nice little fresh thing of grease every time and just pack it right full until you see it coming out around all the way around. And then just take a little bit from the center, put it around the outside. Don't be shy. Do all four bearings at the same time so you only get dirty once. Drop your bearing in. Grab your little guy and go wash your hands. 
So wonderful. Now we can install our seal. Just drop that on. We can tap it around the outside. I like my seal installing tool. Drop that in, make sure it's nice and flush. Biggest thing is you don't want it on angle. So if you have a socket that's slightly bigger and you hear that ting, you know that it's flush. Have a little tab, slide that in the groove. So this inch and a sixteenth, you wanna spin it as you're tightening it until it starts to get um, a little bit difficult. What you're doing is two tapered bearings against each other, you wanna push them into each other and then just give them a little bit of breathing room. So it's generally about two flats um, or it lines up with the cotter hole. So you wanna be able to spin freely, but you don't want it to have any play back and forth this way. That cotter pin. I grab your dust cap installer, which is just slightly bigger than your seal. Perfect. We just want to snug our rotor down flush so it's on the hub properly, and that'll help us make sure that our pads on the caliper are nicely lined up with the rotor. If they're not, if the back rotor hits, we have to shim it to bring the caliper out a little bit. If, um, if the opposite is true, shim it, shim it up the other way. Now our caliper comes fully assembled. Um, it has an L and a right and an R on it for left and right. Um, the main thing is that you wanna have your bleeder screw at the top, otherwise you'll never be able to get the air to the system and you will have a spongy pedal. I'm tightening that is a 3 8 Allen. So your kit will come with flex lines. Keep in mind that the back and the front have flex lines. So if your hole's too small, you, you grab the wrong flex line. It's coming, hold on, it's coming, there it is. So there's a copper washer that seals it on either side of the banjo fitting. Let's go and snug her up again. Don't get too carried away. Now that should line up with your um, clip that's already on your car. We don't have brake lines on the car yet. We're gonna tuck this out of the way so it doesn't uh, scratch the paint. Make sure that you don't get brake fluid on your painted surfaces. Um, not so good for your paint. So that's it for your front. And it looks magnificent. Let's head over to the back. There's an impact driver that'll twist it as you hit it. Pretty cool little idea. Oh, you dirty, dirty bugger. I'm gonna try 13 and a little bit of heat. It is always the last one. I think I got it. Nice. Okay, I don't have to weld a nut on it. There's oil in there, so that's good. Look at that big old open diff, son of a bitch. So the first thing we need to do is remove our axle. It's called a C-clip. And what we have to do is pull this pin out with this little half inch bolt. We can push the axle in slightly and pull the C-clip out and then our axle can get out. Um, this is a 12 bolt rear end as we can count by the bolts. I don't think this one is original to the car because true 242 GTOs all came with a posi. This does not have a posi. So, we need a posse. <laughs> uh, we'll put the cover back on again for now, but uh, if anybody has a 12 bolt, I think it's a 30 spline posse kicking around that they don't want to do anything with anymore and donate to a good cause. Well, well, well we wanna light up both tires at the same time. Anyway, let's get rid of this. Carefully rotate, keep in mind that your spiders aren't gonna come with it. Push your axle in, you can see that, and there's your magic little C-clip. It falls out. Just make sure you grab that, but you can push your axle out. And there's your axle. Put that nicely out of the way. Now you don't have to take any of this apart, just these four bolts. Take that whole drum away and, I don't know, send it to a flea market or memorabilia? I don't know. 
So now we want to clean the surface so we got a nice clean spot to uh, work off of, nice and flush. That was a good time to replace your axle seal. The seal still feels plenty soft, so I don't think it's gonna leak, but we will keep an eye on it. Okay, we've got some paint on here. Cover that up nicely. We'll put our backing plate on. Now these backing plates are optional, but I'm Dutch. So if they came with it, I'm gonna use it. Now this is the bracket that you're gonna use. See how this is a machined surface that goes towards the back and the fork goes about a two o'clock position. Again, different setups have uh, different spacing on it. So the kit comes with spacing to bring the one unit out or the calipers farther back, depending on where your pads sit on your rotor. I put some medium sized shims on the other side and had to take them out. Um, this axle setup doesn't need any. At this point, our axle can go back in again. We'll put our C-clip back into our diff and tighten that up. The rotor can go back on. At this point, we'll want to put some uh, lug nuts on again to hold the rotor tight against the axle. So now it's time to put our emergency brake cable in. It clips in the front bracket just like the original one would. Take the spring out, uh, you can do that by hand, and then just poke your cable through. Stick your spring in, pull your cable out, and just carefully stick it where it's supposed to go. And then push your spring into place. Bam, e-brake cable. Now look at this. Oh, so nice. Nice having a fun, fast car. It's nicer knowing that you can stop that and not kill yourself or wreck your car. Now you might notice this flex line here that was never there before. What that is, is a way to connect to our brake line. We do have to weld this little tab here. We're gonna go around the shock. We're gonna go straight back. The exhaust comes up around to the outside of the frame there. So we'll scratch that paint off and we just weld that in place. Don't forget your little clipping behind the spring. It comes in from this way, and then that's kind of what that should look like. Okay, so now we'll install the master and the booster that comes with it, and that's just two little bolts right at the back here. Take that out. So this is our old booster that somebody sanded down and painted real nice. Took a lot of time to do that and we're gonna throw it away because it will never look like this one. Now all we have to do is duplicate this one to look exactly like this one. What I mean by that is the same length of rod that comes out to your pedal um, and it comes with one that threads onto here and you can cut that to whatever size you need it to be. Comes with a nice new clevis and pin, new brackets to mount it to the firewall, the bracket to mount the proportioning valve, and also the lines to go from the proportioning valve to the master. Um, comes with the wire for your brake, uh, your brake wire sensor for your shuttle pig, and it also comes with a bleeder for the master to bench bleed it. We're gonna install it as is, um, and then finish running our lines up to it, then we'll bench bleed it, and then we'll install the brake lines when they're all hanging there perfectly the way I want it. So, um, easy peasy, here we go. Since I'm gonna be taking it off anyway, I'll nip it afterwards. We'll just make sure that that's six and a half. So that's roughly where it's gotta be. Wonderful. Just bend those just slightly to make the holes line up, but I'm afraid of scratching this, so probably pull it back off again. 
but I know that this is where the proportion valve is gonna end up, so I can run my brake lines from there. So here we go. Okay, so we ran all new brake lines to the front. These go down and then sneak across the axle, go over to the other side. We've got clips off of Tuesday, but I can't bleed the brake system because I don't have the rear flex line. $65 in town, um, take about a week to get, and $13 off eBay, but they don't ship to Canada. So we're shipping that to the border and grabbing that when we have some other stuff show up because I can't drive all the way there just for a $13 piece. So far, all I can say is that the brake install went very, very easy, very straightforward, got rid of a lot of headaches and more rust control in the back. Even if we had the brakes bled, couldn't tell because it worked really good because the car doesn't move. So we're gonna have to stick around. Uh, car's heading off to paint. We will be putting the torque converter in and the transmission, which is still right there uh, because that got delayed. Delayed, delayed, delayed. I feel like I'm on a reality TV show or something. But anyway, we still have like five, six weeks before Motorola. So, off the paint, there's the trailer, it's loading in, and uh, we'll stop in at the paint shop uh, a couple times a week just to see what's going on, make sure that they're still working on it, and then we'll see you at Motorama. Here we go. <laughs>